Hey there, everybody. Welcome back with the Plat. Or Platypus is the name, and we are playing more Octopath Traveler 2. Today, we are talking about the Dancer, which is going to be completing the eight video series of how the characters have changed from Octopath 1 to Octopath 2. So, if there's any that you missed or you haven't seen, they're all in a playlist on Octopath Traveler 2 on my YouTube channel. You can also just like scroll back in the last week is when we've done all the videos. Anyway, before we jump into it, just really quickly want to say the game is coming out on this Friday, which is a couple days as of recording, and we're going to be doing a stream the morning of. I worked the night before, so I'm not going to be too crazy, but I'm going to go to bed, wake up, get some coffee, and we're just going to get right into it. We're going to be playing the game on a fresh save um, and just going through, hopefully having a good time. So. If you want to hang out with a bunch of people that love Octopath, that's a good spot to come and hang out. Now, with that out of the way, without any further ado, let us go ahead and look at the dancer here. This is a Primrose versus Agnea. So, um, let's get it. Let's get it out of the way. All right. We don't know what Agnea is like. We don't get to see her. We only get to see her first chapter. We don't get to see her story develop. She is a significantly worse character so far than primrose primrose is interesting with motivation and drive and this character that's doing something they hate just to just to get back and like for revenge like they're on this revenge quest very interesting engaging story agnia has the entire town being like you're so good you're so good and she's like am i good i guess i'm good and then they're like oh you're so good here's a tip take our money you're too good for us and then she leaves that's the entire entire her entire story there's not even a negative part of it. Everyone loves her and talks about how amazing she is. So character aside, so I don't like Agnea's character, but besides the character, damn it, this might be my favorite class in the entire game, all right? So Agnea, you might win being in my party just purely from me liking your skill set. So let's go ahead and take a look here. First, two path actions. This is what you would expect. We've got Allure and Entreat. Allure is basically exactly the same as it is in Octopath 1. You get a town person to follow you around, and you can summon them in battle to do some things. However, this has been buffed. Um, this also will have a... You can see this dance session. Trigger additional effects when using dance skills with an Allured companion. Basically, her dances are stronger than other dances because you'll get a secondary effect when you have a recruited person. So... Every time we dance, we are also going to have the villager activate Inspiring Rhythm, restore a small amount of SP to the target. So that's very, very powerful, but there's all kinds of effects. You have some characters that will do Bewildering Grace, which is an ability we're talking about coming up. Some characters that will raise physical attributes, you know, blah, 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 this, that, and the other thing. Everything you can think of, there's basically something that this talent dance session will do. So Allure has been buffed. Um, Path Action at Night and Treat. This is basically stealing items i think you're guaranteed to get it but uh you just have to be the right level and then you get items from them so that's nice you know it's really good to have her around you have she has to get to a high level but then you basically get items for free um and her latent power is to spread the effects of single target skills to all this does not affect divine skills or skills that only affect the user so that is a pretty big i won't say drawback but that is a pretty big asterisk so it's a very powerful ability, but not all encompassing. But uh, this latent power, I think, is probably the strongest latent power in the game. Um, very, very good. The ability to things that target single and said target all. I am it. I am wondering what the divine powers do. This is very similar to the old divine skill of the dancer that we don't have anymore. Um, and I'm not sure what the new one is. Again, I've talked about it before. There are they've been kind of leaked because people can set their levels to whatever they want because they made the demo as long as they want and um I, but i kind of consider that a little spoilery so i haven't looked them up and i kind of want to that'll be a post game release kind of update i kind of want to access only the parts of the game that the developers intended for us to access in the demo you know i don't want to just like data mine all the information before anyone's even had a chance to get their hands on it so we're gonna leave that off the table for now but it is interesting. I bet a lot of the divine skills are going to be very powerful, obviously. Um, so this not hitting them is a pretty big one. But I think even with the stip, you know, stipulations, whatever, even with the nerfs, I think uh, it's still very strong. So let's take a look at the actual skills, though. So a couple of these are going to be quite pretty much exactly the same. But we've got some brand new 
cool ability. So Lion Dance is exactly the same. Peacock Strut, exactly the same. And Bewildering Get Grace is probably not exactly the same. It has the same definition here. Cause a curious effect to occur one time, up to four times. Um, this, even though it says the same thing, there's not really a way to know if the thing behind the scenes, all the numbers, there's like, there was like a hundred different things that could happen of different chances, right? So it's like, oh, you could get 50 times experience or 50, 50 times JP this fight, or you just drain all your SP, or you do a fire attack, or you could like lower your party's attack, or like all these effects, tons of effects, and it's completely random. It's like a metronome in Pokemon, but with more than half of the outcomes being bad. Um, but some of the outcomes are so good that people use it. Um, but I don't know if they change the percentages on this or anything, but as of now, it seems like this is probably going to be exactly the same or at least incredibly similar. So other than those, everything else is going to be different, which is actually so quite a few different abilities here, which is kind of cool. So uh, very first one, Moonlight Waltz. We do not have the dark damage. We instead are doing wind based damage to a single foe. So darkness moved over to the thief Wind move over here, you know, a lot, lot of the elements just kind of did a little shift around. I don't think that really matters too much. Um, we are losing the AOE ability to hit all foes. We don't have Night Ode, um, which is a big deal. It feels like a lot of the AOE has gone, but I think the augmenting um, effect of like the Scholar will make up for that in a lot of ways. Um, being able to target other characters to make their ability stronger is probably going to be a pretty buff thing to do. But my new, a new addition and probably my favorite ability maybe in the game is Ruinous Kick. It's up there. Um, unleash a powerful physical kick on a single foe. Reduce their shield points regardless of their weak points. Now, this is, it always removes one shield. That's not like insane, right? But it just looks so fucking cool. She literally does, it says Ruinous Kick. This is a roundhouse kick. She comes and stands up. She does a fucking, she does like a, she turns around and she just goes, Wah! in fact, let's, let's kill this guy. Just so we could show it off. Yeah, give me the bag. Give me the bag, buddy. I just want to do ruinous kick here. Just to show you guys how fucking awesome this ability is. Let's slow it down. All right. First, let's go ahead and buff ourselves. All right. We're not here to we're not here to mess around. We'll actually speed up till we're ruinous kicking. And then I want it to have the full. I want to have all my BP up when I do it. Okay. And then we're going to break him with it. Even we're going to break him with it, too. That way, we're, this is this is the full cinematic effect. All right, let's go. Ruinous kick. Slow it down. Here we go. Ruinous kick. Look how fucking cool this is. She goes, oh, flip back, oh! and then they just fucking explode. That ability is one of my favorite. I don't know if it's like insanely good, but it does. Sometimes an ability doesn't have to be good if it makes you feel good, you know. Um, yes, yes. I'll take Al's bag, please. Thank you. Let's turn it in the daytime. I like the song more. It's the same song. I think it's different. Um, but that ability is insane. <laughs> Insanely cool, at least. Sweeping Gale, we've seen. Now, Simulate, this is replacing, essentially, um, not Mole Dance. In fact, we don't even have, like, a Mole Dance-like ability. The ability to raise physical defense. Um, sorry, sorry. But am I crazy? Lion Dance and the... The peacocks, right? Yeah, we don't have the defensive dance. That's right. I, for some reason, I, I was I must have gotten just confused with a different character. But we have simulate, which is uh, removing the panther dance. Instead of augmenting a single ally's speed for two turns, we can move a single ally's action up one spot. So one thing to keep in mind when you're looking at these abilities: lion dance, ruinous kick, peacock strut, sweeping gale, stimulate, um, and be not bewildering grace. But these ones, it's like these go with her latent action right she can make these affect all she can make all allies next action action move up one two three four spots so she can make your basically your whole team go first i feel like stimulate is probably just going to be a bad version of the jumpy the whatever the boots are you know the um but the fact that you could use this multiple times you have to repair the boots every time you do it but it lasts for five turns instead of one turn so 
I think likely we're just going to be using the inventor boots and over stimulate, but still this is an ability that likely will be very good to have sometimes. If you really need to have one of your slower characters move before the boss to break them this turn, this is going to be a perfect ability to help you manipulate. And so the boots always make everyone go first, makes characters go first, right? But this lets you even more specifically, you can make one character move up three spots. So they're ahead of this one, but not ahead of that one or you know or vice or this gives you a lot of control so i think it's a good ability um i'm not sure how much i'm going to use it but it's one of those abilities that you're going to be really happy to have when you have a very specific want dagger dance is a brand new ability this is i guess you could say this is replacing knight's ode dealing dark damage to all foes but instead we unleash a dagger attack on all foes now what's very important about the dagger dance is this counts as a dance so if you remember our ability here whenever we have a we have a talent whenever uh, we trigger additional effects whenever we do a dance with a companion on the field. So the dances are, from what I could tell, Lion Dance, Peacock Strut, and the Dagger Dance. Maybe the be bewildering, bewildering Grace is also a dance, I'm pretty sure. Um, but this means you could do actually a physical attack, an AoE attack at that, that triggers the ability. So with the current setup here, this takes 9 SP. Every time she casts this ability... She heals her own SP by 40. So this is basically an SP steal with the current companion setup. You can also make it so it heals her HP every time she does it, or it buffs her own attack, or it buffs, you know, you can make it so these dances do all these things, but it's worth noting Dagger Dance is indeed a dance attack. So very powerful, very cool. Um, definitely one of the cooler abilities here. Plus it's just an AOE attack with decent damage, which I like anyway. Um, so that's it for the skills that we know about right now. As far as, as, far as the support skills, um, the first one, and most importantly, the, you know, this is probably the best one, and it also stays the same. All the other, the other three are actually all different, though, which is pretty interesting. Um, extends the duration of augmenting effects granted by the equipped character for one turn. So if you use this and you have a lion dance instead of for two turns, it'll be for three turns, yada, yada, blah, blah. You guys know what's up. This feels like this would be something that's potentially better on this. I feel like this is something I might want to use on the like apothecary because they have that concoct ability that allows them to use weeds basically to make a healing thing but it all lasts for one turn and so being able to do this on that and make that go last for two turns so you can keep adding more and more seems better she already like if you lion dance you're already getting lion dance for two four six like eight turns right like it lasts a long time if you use any bp in it um i still think i think it's just a really good ability in general you would this is something that's always good. I'm not sure exactly what class I'm going to want it on the most. Probably going to want it on the Augmenting Magic for Oswald. Well, actually, that doesn't work. Um, it says by one turn, and that's a number of uses. So that probably wouldn't work in that way. But still, great ability. Now, for some of the new ones, Ever Evasive. What we used to have was a 50% chance of counterattacking after being targeted by a physical attack. Now, this is just pure upside, in my opinion. Um, enables the equipping character to more easily evade enemy attacks. I don't know exactly the numbers here, but having a 50% chance of counterattacking after being targeted by a physical attack is like fine, but this is still, I think better is you just want to avoid enemy attacks in general. This seems better. You'd rather not take the damage, right? Um, sometimes clutch evades and evade tanking is like a very real thing in a lot of games. So this is either, to be fair, this is either going to be completely useless, never good, or it's going to be fucking phenomenal and probably should use it on pretty much every character. So um, we will see. I really like Ever Evasive. I think this is an upgrade from the eye to eye. Now, instead of Second Wind, which lets you recover SP every turn, which I think would have been pretty bad on this character. Now that you could have the Allure ability to recover your own SP constantly, and now that, like, it, it, I feel like that's just less necessary. The SP management in this game seems a little bit easier, especially with Apothecaries still being ex existing and people knowing how to play the game. We now have Hard Worker. Receive additional JP after battles. Incredible. This is exactly what I want. Like, my first team is probably going to be like Throne, um, Particio, Hikari, and Agnia, right? Maybe I'll do like Oswald. I got to figure it out. I like a lot of the characters, but I want all the characters like you get extra XP, you get extra JP. You get extra, I don't, those are the two I want. I want, like, hers is like, Throne is like, you get EXP and JP at night. Hers, you give extra JP. I don't know if these stack. Um, it says equipping multiple characters with this skill will have no added effect. It doesn't say multiple skills with this effect don't have an effect, right? It's not exactly the same. Hard Worker is not the same as the Knight one. They're, they're, they have a similar ability, 
but they're different and so i assume that they will stack on top of each other and so this is going to be an easy i gotta rush to it i need it i need the jp jp is king and i want it after that invigorate and inspire this ability is fucking sick once for battle upon being incapacitated you'll recover 25 percent of your maximum hp that is moved i believe to the cleric i said earlier i actually had to go back and look but um the ability to revive that is old that is out get rid of that ability now we have invigorate invigorate and inspire potentially one of the greatest uh support skills in the game slightly fill the target's latent power gauge when the equipping character grants them an augmenting effect so this sounds like it includes herself but also this works incredibly well with her latent power the ability to give everyone a lion dance everyone a peacock strut um means that she is going to be able to do everyone's like it says slightly it depends how slight if it's really little it's not that good if this is something that's pretty badass like this is something we might want on the apothecary to throw when you're throwing weeds at people um things like that this could be really really insanely good latent powers are very powerful very very powerful um and so i think that this could be one of the best support skills especially like imagine having a full party and they all have the aoe you could like use latent powers and just everyone is boom everyone fills up their latent gauge like every other turn or something i feel like this is there's like a potentially super broken build with this that i want to try also the fact that um just her latent pa power is so insanely powerful overall kind of makes me want i gotta use agnia all right we got to the end of the video we i gotta use agnia her latent power is too strong and too interesting for me to not try it with so many abilities i really really want to use it on a bunch of abilities i love this support skill very excited to use it i am excited to see what this is the um this looks like it's going to be another dance probably a buff dance which is probably pretty cool. Hopefully it's an insanely broken one. Hopefully it only targets one person. That way you spread it to all people. It's well, it's a divine skill. So this one probably, this one won't work with her ability, but still hopefully that it targets everybody. I don't know, but that's it. Agnia, you may not be my favorite character, but God damn it. Are you my favorite RPG <laughs> character? Like you got, you got basically my favorite stat sheet. Um, besides maybe Hikari. Hikari has got the whole package where he's incredibly fun, but that's it. Yeah, we got to the end of the video, guys. Much love. For platypuses, for platypus, don't forget about the stream coming up on Friday. Let me know which character you finally decided you want to start with now that you've seen all of these. And uh, let me know if there's, think there's anything I'm missing, any potential really cool combinations. I'm going to do a video talking about which of my starter parties I'd recommend. Like, all right, which four should you use? Um, it, depending on what you want to do in the game, like a more elemental focus party, a more physical focus party. What are the kind of builds for the early game? I think that's going to be fun. Anyway, much love for platypuses, for platypus. I will see you next time. Have a good night and day, friends.